Welcome to MacChasm. My name is Luca Fiore. And I'm Brennan Chanel. And today we're going to be talking about two products completely unrelated to one another. Uh, one is uh, an iPad uh, game. Uh, uh, iPhone or iPad game. Monsters ate my condo. And the other is uh, Cinegrain, which is, uh, I guess you could call them plugins for uh, film buffs that want to make their uh, short films look. Uh, it's for hipsters. Yeah, it's for hipsters. Anyway. <laughs> so the first game we have is, uh, is basically a, uh, I, I guess... It's fucked is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> if you want a seizure, you're going to play this game. Yeah. Um, if you have seizures, I'd recommend you not play this game. For some reason, though, the flashing lights and the colors, like, as, as seizure-inducing as you'd think it would be, <laughs> I, I don't find myself, like, literally putting the... Putting the yeah iPad down and thinking like I can't play this game for the for anymore. But like it's it's it's. But it's if you're good. susceptible to seizures, if you are susceptible, you're, yeah. you're going down. Yeah, I guess. Um, so basically, there's these condo buildings that drop, and you have to swipe the colors towards the color of monster on each side, and then these bricks will start building up, and they change from bronze to silver to gold to platinum, and then you can swipe it to either side, and bonuses and crazy shit happens. Um, so basically, these bricks keep coming down. So. I, I guess you kind of compare it to like a bejeweled mixed... Jenga. With, yeah, right? Yeah, Jenga element. In uh, there. Eventually, if you don't have your buildings lined up properly, it'll tip over and you lose. Um, it keeps coming quicker. There's a lot of colors and flashing and lights and... Now the, the, but the way that we're describing it, it doesn't really do it justice because like not only are there like colors, but like the monsters themselves are fucked. Like the yellow monster is, is like a, a chihuahua inside of a, <laughs> inside of a giant robot. And the, See, I, I the green monster is this Irish stereotype or, or Dutch stereotype. I didn't even notice too much because I was... You get into the game, you just watch the condos so much, the colors, you're trying to... I'm watching you play and I'm wondering what the hell is going yeah, on. So it, I guess you, you pick up on those things when you're watching somebody else play, but I didn't really notice those things. I was just quick going and going and going and then you get like 88 million or 200 million or some crazy yeah. point score and then you're like, just keep going, just keep going, I can't stop. So it's fun, it's really addictive. It's 99 cents on the app store. Um, everybody we know who's, who's played it just can't put it down. Yep. We just keep playing it. And so it's highly recommendable for us. I, I wanted to say something about uh, some people from Adult Swim were responsible for it. Josh, do you know what was the something about Adult Swim? They do. They do a whole bunch of games. So they do. Oh, Adult Swim does a lot of games. Yeah, ga oh, they, cool. They develop like four or five games. Like there's a crazy ass unicorn one that's super popular. They're all like. But they're all of the similar are, vein yeah, that would that similar. that they would play on Adult Swim. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. So. Yeah. Makes sense, guys. Good job. So if you want a cool, addictive iPhone app game that you're going to play uh, all the time, you're never going to put it down, um, check out uh, Monsters Ate My Condo. Yep. For 99 cents on the Monsters Ate My Condoms. Tasty. <laughs> uh, the next uh, thing we're reviewing today is uh, what's called Cinegrain. It's called Hipster Grain. Hipster Grain. Uh, Cinegrain um, is a company out of LA that what they decided to do was uh, purchase a shitload of 35 millimeter, 16 mil, 8 millimeter film uh, of all sorts of ISOs, expired type, uh, a shitload of them. And uh, what they did was they just filmed just the grain. And the purpose of it is to make your digital footage look, well, more cinematic, more like film. And some of it is I guess, like, as I'm showing you, some of it is very subtle, and you can barely even know that it's there, but it does feel and look different. And as you can see, they ship tea on this nice little drive. It's a little, little lacy drive that I think is kind of stylish anyway. But it feels and looks very subtle. And I'm a big fan of these, like, subtle looks, but, like, these major film scratches and stuff like that, I, 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 know, it, I know it sounds odd because it's based on real film, but it looks not so believable and it can re and it can really it's really easy to overdo a film and to make it look like i don't know so in your in in a real scenario how often would you use the, would you use the grains that they provide you with is it more for a aesthetic kind of thing when you're Absolutely, doing a short film for 5 minutes or would you use it over the course of a 20 minute film well um, i think uh, one of the more famous films to use this was Black Swan. 
because what they did was they mixed 16 millimeter film with 7D footage. Mm -hmm. And in order to make the 7D footage match the 16 mil, they put this uh, Cinegrain stuff on top of it and it looked and it matches better to it. So that there's that purpose to it. Okay. But there's, uh, in all honesty, it's for retroizing your, your, your film. It, it, it's, it's, in all honesty, it's not, that's what digital is nowadays. Like we're, we're all, we want 24 frames a second and we want, you know, shallow depth of field. And we want more and more like film. Well, Cinegrain's giving you the basically film. film. Yeah. That's it. And I mean, they even do a good job with shipping it like this. I think it's Yeah, I think it's a I great it's idea. Nice. It's and normally you don't get things like this. You might get the hard drive. It doesn't say anything on it. Or, and the amount of external hard drives that people have nowadays just to have something like this lying around and be like, oh yeah, that's what that's for. Yep. Not just, oh, it's just another one of those hard drives and I don't know what's on it, I'm just gonna erase it. Yep. Um, so they do good, do a good job with that. And I saw the, the video footage and uh, it, it's pretty impressive. Yep. They, they also give you, uh, <laughs> it's kind of like hipstamatic type uh, presets where like they give you like all sorts of color saturations, kind of yep. like what, what's called summer haze or where it's blue and yellows and stuff like that. But like it's, it's Pretty neat to say the least. So, right. what does this run? This package specifically was five hundred dollars. This included one hundred fifty clips, both in ten eighty p and two k, in ProRes four two two HQ. Um, now, what about for uh, more of a consumer market? Do they have anything directed towards consumers? And this if is anybody the second cheapest one that they have. Yeah, it's 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 a it's not something it's more for professionals. It's this is what they call the uh, the indie uh, package. They have one for indie pros, and they have the professional one. Professional one's four grand, and uh, it includes three hundred clips of this stuff, and it's in like the highest ProRes quality in 2K. and it, 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 I'm glad that they give you standard, they give you a high resolution version of it and they don't cheap out and give you like a 720p version that's gonna look like shit when it's blown up 50% yeah. to put on 1080p footage anyway. Mm -hmm. One of the best parts about this, I'd say, is probably how um, easy it is to put on your footage. It's just as simple as changing the blend mode, like putting your choice of grain on there and just changing the blend mode and if you want it less subtle or more subtle just changing the brightness and contrast to it and it'll work in Final Cut, Final Cut X, Final Cut Express, any nonlinear editor of your choice basically. Um, in my video example that I put up, uh, it's my girlfriend making delicious chocolate pancakes by the way, um, I wanted to show people what it was like to use this with a lower end digital cinema camera like my T2i and like a higher end uh, camera like the FS100 that Sony makes and one of the highest ones that I had access to which was the red one. You're so dreamy. <laughs> Is it my eyes? Is it my hair? Oh, you're good. Touch keep my going. hair. No, just keep Touch going. Touch my hair. Okay. Touch, thank uh. you. <laughs> <laughs> just keep going. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway, I wanted to show people that like it, it would look at least good on any type of camera that you could throw at it, and like I don't know, mission accomplished. They do do a good job. Um, not recommended for uh, consumers, more prosumers or professionals. Yeah, that would probably um, be. You can't the case. use it in iMovie. Um, you can't do much in iMovie, so I wouldn't really recommend anyone using iMovie anymore I unless you're a beginner. Um, but. If you're going to get into film grains and you want to uh, you want to try and spice up your film and not it's look a like a slick look, else, honestly. Give her. Yep. I don't know if there's any comparable things like that out there. So far, I haven't seen anything, but I imagine that won't uh, take long for more people to get in on this bandwagon. No, because the hipstagram and the Instagram worlds are taking off, so I can just imagine it's going to transform into the film world. Yep. Um, so, highly recommend you check out Cinegrain and pick up one of these uh, devices for your films. Uh, so, I guess that's uh, all we got for today. So, uh, that's yeah, that's it for this week's episode. Um, find us on on YouTube, youtubecom slash Podcast. We're on Blip. We're on Twitter. We're on everywhere. Just Google Macgasm, and yep. anything that comes up will be us. Um, so, if you want to follow us online, I'm at twitter.com/scene, and I'm at at Valkaline. 
so you can get in touch with us there or josh's twitter.com slash joshua or twitter.com slash mattcasm so that's it for this weekend we hope you had a good one